Remain standing as we read our foundation scripture today, coming from Matthew, the sixth chapter, Matthew 6, starting at verse 24. We're going to go down to verse 34. And it reads, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. More simple, this, you cannot serve God and money. Or you can't serve God and the money system. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat or food? And isn't your body more than just clothing? Behold the fowls, the birds of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. They don't gather in the barns. They don't store up, they don't go shopping. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you much better than they? And which of you, by thinking about it and worrying about it, can add one cubit unto his stature, can get taller? So why are you taking thought for your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, the flowers, how they grow. They don't go to work. They don't spin. They don't put forth effort. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his wealth, glory, wasn't arrayed like one of these. So why, if God clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye of little faith. Therefore, I'm telling you again, take no thought saying what we shall eat, what we shall drink, how we're going to be clothed. After all these things do the Gentiles seek, the people that don't know God and the people that don't have a covenant, they worry about those things. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Here's what you do. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for things of itself sufficient Unto the day is the evil thereof. You may be seated. So Bill Winston, Dr. Bill Winston started preaching the other night and he used the subject, he used the subject under new management. And when he start, start talking about being under new management, the Lord told me to continue with that train of thought with a series that he gave me probably three weeks to a month ago that I, did, I didn't know when I was going to teach it. It's something I probably taught 15, 20 years ago. Let me see your hands if you was here 15, 20 years ago. Let me see your hands. Okay, put your hands down. Let me see your hands if you weren't here 15, 20 years ago. Come on, if you were not here, 15, come on, it's all right. Okay, so that means at least half of y'all need to hear this again. And the ones who were here, they don't remember. They forgot. But hopefully, because it's not just something that you remember in terms of fact, what I want to present to you, it's a whole nother way of living. So even if you don't remember the exact points I made, hopefully when you heard this, it shifted how you live. That's what this series, this message is designed to do, to shift how you live, okay? So often, especially among men, or the more among professional men, you meet people and they will say, well, what do you do? Or better yet, even say, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? And right now, let me tell you, the most natural way to answer that, I'm a teacher, I'm a professor, I'm an attorney. I work down at the mill. I, I'm a salesperson. But by the time I finish this, if you get this in your spirit, that's going to trigger something else when they hear that. When someone says, you, uh, what do you do for a living? Either you say, whether you say it or not will depend on your boldness and maybe even who you're around or the context. But your mind should go to, I believe God. 
What do you do for a living? I sow seed in the kingdom of God. I make my living by my giving. Now, they didn't always do that, and always understand that, but well over 20 years ago now, when I got revelation of the word that I'm teaching you today, I shifted how I live. I make my living by my giving. Some of you, I need you to listen to me clearly. Some of you went through things and you got subdued. You let the devil punk you. And you start thinking you made your living by your profession. You start thinking you made your living based upon clients and customers. But you got to know you make your living through the kingdom of God. By obeying God, by living by faith, and sowing in the kingdom of God. So watch this. The devil can never put me under circumstances because I will sow my way out. I will sow my way out. If I have to give it all away to get out of a situation to show God I trust your system more than his world system, I'll do it because he did it before and he'll do greater in the future. We started this ministry. I'm full time in the ministry, believing God for $3,000 a month to just sustain what I had through my corporate job. We didn't own a home. I'm believing God for everything. Soon as I went full-time ministry, some of you heard me tell a story. I got up and looked at our 20 to 40 folks in attendance. All of them weren't members. About 20 of them were members. Half of them were looking at me cockeyed and sideways trying to figure out who you are, if you're serious, what's going to happen with this church. So they were not all in like that. Because this is how things work in the church regarding finances. When you're coming into the church, the last thing that comes is your pocketbook. When you're getting connected, the last thing that comes, because I don't know them like that. So let me come check them out. A couple months later, maybe I'll start giving at a rate that shows I'm vested. But when folks leave the church, the first thing they leave is their pocketbook. They still here, but they stop giving. They still here, but I ain't tithing anymore. And so that's where we were at that time. And I looked at those folks. I said, well, you know, if y'all could find it in your heart to give Pastor Marshall and I $20 a week, we can maybe make it. And folks looked at me like some of y'all looking at me now. You said the Lord told you to be full-time in ministry. You need to ask the Lord to give you that $20 a week. And immediately the Lord rebuked me. The Lord said to me, don't you ever get up in that pulpit or stand by, I didn't have a pulpit, stand by that podium. Don't you ever stand behind that podium and ask anybody for anything for yourself. He said, don't you ever take up an offering and ask anybody for anything yourself. So you can rest assured, anytime I'm receiving an offering, it ain't about me. It's about this church and what God called his church to do. Because I'm going to be all right. God showed me that. Long before this church could pay me a dime, God was taking care of me. And if he did it before, he'll do more in the future. Y'all knows how I'm saying that now, right? <laughs> And so people, and Lord said to me, don't you ever ask people for money for you. He said to me, these people are not here to meet your needs. You are here to meet their needs. He said, you make sure their needs met and I'll take care of your needs. The Lord told me, he said, you do your job well and I will pay you well. Yes. And I've been living like that now for, since 1997. Told me, you do your job well, I'll pay you well. God's paying me well. I must be doing my job well. And I'm not saying that with any type of pride. Okay? And so I had to make a decision who I was going to trust. Because y'all, we all have to live. I don't care what your profession is. I don't care whether you speak in and out of tongues. Whether you speak Hebrew, Hebrew, 
no Hebrew. <laughs> we all got to live. We all need food. We all need water. We all need housing. We all need clothing. We all have needs. We have needs, then we have wants, then we have desires. But how we live and how we get those needs, wants, and desires met, it depends upon which system we believe and trust in. And so I want to speak today from the subject, changing financial systems. Changing financial systems. What you depend upon to get your needs met. What you depend upon to get your wants met. What you depend upon to get your desires met. And notice I say it in that order. Those you've been around for a long time know, I believe that that's how God starts blessing us and prospering us. He starts off with needs, we go to wants, then we go to desires. Starts off with needs, we go to want, then we go to desire. Some of y'all are broke, okay? And you're not supposed to be broke. You're broke because you don't understand that progression of needs, wants, desires. You're broke because you're living in desire realm and you need to be living in need realm right now. Again, I didn't say it. I heard another preacher say it, so I'm going to say it. Don't get mad. If you're real mad, ask me. I'll tell you who said it. But a preacher a colleague of mine would say, you're not supposed to have a Louis bag in a cavity. Let me try this side. You shouldn't have a Louis bag in a cavity. You need to get the cavity fixed. But you desire a Louis bag. It ain't time yet. Get the cavity fixed and then go to Walmart and get yourself a lag. You can't, it ain't time for a bag. Just get yourself a lag and go on about your business somewhere. That's not, okay? And there's nothing wrong with those things, you know? And, and, and let me say this here. Um, I have not, again, it, 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 I, I'm, I, this, I, I know how God blessed me. I know he's done with me. But I have colleagues who, they believe God for this, they believe God for that, and, and we got a material thing. I never believe God for material things. I believe God will increase me. When God increases you, you get options. You, you, you all understand that. I need a, I need a Mercedes, a Mercedes, a Mercedes. Just let God increase you. When God increases you, you can have options and live as you want. You need increase. And God promised he'll increase you. But you got to manage increase as you go. So we all have needs, we all have wants, we have, we have desires. And you first, you learn to trust God for your needs. Then you go to your wants, your desires. An example I've used for those of you who were not at faith school or didn't watch faith school, one of the things I've taught over the years regarding that progression is that if you have no vehicle here in Columbia, South Carolina, all the more in Orangeburg. <laughs> if you have no vehicle, what do you need? A car. Okay. Now, up north, particularly New York, New Jersey area, they got public transportation out to Yin Yang. You got options. I'm going to take the tra train, I'm going to take the you know, bus, I'm going to go this way or that way. Uh, my daughter, she kept wanting to, she had a car when she went to New York and uh, it st sat in my driveway. And she kept saying, Dad, I want to take my car. She didn't know. She, she hadn't lived up in New York. I said, I said, this car is going to be a headache for you in New York. Especially in the winter, with all sea, try, when, when, the, when the snows, you can't park here, you can park here this day, can't park there that day. I said, it's going to be a nightmare. Keep that car here. And then eventually, she, eventually she, that, that, that worked out, and, uh, and we, sold, we sold a car. She was so shocked. We sold a car. I think I got like $15,000 and gave her the money. She was shocked. She said, Dad, did you really giving me the money? I said, I bought you the car. This is your car. She, she, she thought, well, she thought since I, since I bought the car, you know, if I gave it to her, I gave it to her, right? Okay? But, but anyway, so you don't need transportation there. Here, you need, Okay? So I'm saying, no, I just need a friend with a car. No, your friend will tell you you need a car. <laughs> okay? You need to get a car. Okay? You need a car, but you, you need a car. You uh, desire, you, you want a four-door. And you desire a Tesla. But what you need... So if you, if you don't have a car, 
you ain't been affording them car payments, you don't even know if you can pay for gas, you don't even know if you can pay for insurance, you don't go right out and get a Tesla and then walk up to me when I know you all, that your needs got need telling me how much the Lord has blessed you. No, you, you, you skip some steps. Faith is increasing. If you don't have faith for $100, don't try to do, don't, don't get a $1,000 bill. Y'all quiet on me now. You don't have faith for, for $100, don't get a $1,000 bill. You're going to be 10 times stressed. So we all got to meet our needs. But how we live, how we get those needs, wants, desires, and desires, depends on which system we believe and trust. When you got saved, y'all, you became a citizen of the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody shout, I'm in the kingdom now. When you got saved, you became a citizen of the kingdom of God. You first got to get that revelation. Before I was saved, I was outside the kingdom of God. Once I get saved, I'm in the kingdom of God. Listen to me, these folks are lying to you that we're all children of God. The Bible says as many as, as received him, to them he gave them power to become the sons of God. Uh, 1 John, the third chapter, verse 1 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not appear what we shall be. Okay, now, now, when's now? Since we got saved. Now, we're all children of God in a creative sense, but we're not all children of God in relationship. Once you receive Jesus Christ as your savior, he becomes your father, you become his son and his daughter, you are now in the kingdom of God, and oh my God, somebody, this is gonna bless you, somebody. And you are now God's responsibility. Oh my God. My daughter, cause I'm a good, good father. Somebody shout good, good father. My daughter, not only my daughter, but all my kids. Okay, when they were in college, because I, I had to work and, and worrying about money and stressing when I was in college, I don't want any of my children to be worried about money. Okay, they had, they had, they had credit cards that, I, uh, that were, they were authorized users of my credit cards. The whole thing was just let me know. Don't let me get my statement and then see you to put some stuff on there. Okay, because then the credit card get taken away from you. Right, Chandler? Right. <laughs> Okay, they were authorized users on credit cards. Um, they had automatic deposits in their accounts every week. My daughter, because she was overtime. My daughter get married. Well, how old was she? Can get married? Thirty, twenty-nine? Huh? Thirty. So she was thirty. Everybody else got married. And they were, you know, and the boys they, they came out of school, got jobs. Well, she was on overtime. I was believing God for her to have a husband. Okay. Kendra, up until she got married, she got $250, $250 a week from every week on her account. Um, um, she got married. Not, and anything else she needed was taken care of. But I remember I was looking at the calendar, and she got her wedding day was October 2nd, uh, same day as Chandler's birthday, uh, uh, October 2nd, 2021. And uh, about three weeks before, I said, just want to let you know. your last child support check <laughs> will be October 1st, 2021. She said, Dad, can you give me a few extra weeks? I said, no, I don't believe in taking care of another woman's, another man's wife. And I told her that. I said, I don't believe in taking care of another man's wife. Which is why when he got ready to marry my daughter, we sat down. I said, I need to know you can take care of her because she's used to a particular lifestyle, she don't even know what need is, okay? And we ain't going back to that. And I said, I said that, that don't mean you gotta be rich and running over, I said, you don't have to buy bags and all that kind of stuff, but she, I, I need, need to know that things gonna be taken care of. And I said, if there's ever something that look like the need ain't being met, I said, I wanna let you know, I'm gonna step in there for my daughter. You gonna have a problem with that? He said, no, sir, I said, all right. And, you know, we don't need to be having no problems. Every time we don't have no food, your daddy buying us groceries. Yes. <laughs> she got to eat, and I'm going to tell her, now if you're nice, if you got enough, give him some. Okay. 
But my daughter, my children are my responsibility, especially my daughter, okay? Now, I'm old-fashioned. Y'all, I couldn't even sleep last night. The Lord, I, that, I'm, through, I'm getting ready to do this single. Let me see all the single women. Raise your hand, all single ladies, okay? The Lord woke me up. I, I woke me up at, at 4.30. I mean, so I didn't get no extra hour sleep. Woke me up at 4.30, couldn't, I, try, I think I may have fell back to sleep, could try, maybe around 6 o'clock, then it's time to get up. And uh, dealing with me about you, about you young ladies, about, about talking about this, this single ladies night, and I know we traditionally called it what dad didn't tell you about men, but really what, uh, I, I'm really going to talk to you from the heart of a father. About, about from, the, from the heart of a father. Uh, I, I still believe, I'm old fashioned now, I, I still believe men take care of women. Now, okay, but I also believe, watch out for the gold diggers. Okay, I believe, when, I believe men should take care of women. Okay, um, there's nothing wrong with women working, can bring something to the table, but brothers, you need to understand, there may be times that they don't. They may have the option to bring something to the table. You got to be bringing something to the table all the time. Okay. I said, so I, I, I raised my sons that way. I said, I said men, take care of women. Okay. And, and so, this, I still believe this. I believe that it's best to live off one salary and live better with two salaries. You live off one, you live better with two. Let me say it again. Some of y'all getting some free counsel here. You live off one, you live better with two. So if we only have one because stuff happened and these jobs ain't loyal, we still got lights, we still got a vehicle, we still got food, but we ain't going out. Okay, we, we and, and yeah, we, uh, I don't like to eat leftovers more than one day, but these leftovers might have to stretch. You know, and y'all, I don't know if Pastor Marsha, if she be trying to pump me or if she really forgets. So like, it'll be like Wednesday, she's going to make me some meal. I said, didn't we get that Sunday? I said, no, we just got that yesterday. <laughs> I said, no, no, because remember, we went this over there, and we had it that day, and Monday we did something. No, this is like three days old. She can't ever remember. Okay. What I'm saying, y'all, is that when you got saved, you became God's responsibility, right? Colossians 1.13. Boy, I ain't getting nowhere, but hopefully y'all, you already got something. Colossians 1.13. When you got saved, he did, God delivered us from the power of darkness. Peter put it this way. He called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. He delivered us from power of darkness, and he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Come on, say that. Say, I'm a kingdom citizen now. Okay. Have y'all noticed? Have y'all noticed which hostages are being released over there in Gaza? Talk to me. Americans. Who you think negotiating for those, those American hostages? The U.S. government. Why? But we trying to take care of our own. Because our fight ain't your fight. Okay? The Bible says anyone who doesn't take care of his own, the word says that. If a man doesn't take care of his own, especially those of his own house, he's worse than an infidel or unbeliever. So God going to put that in his word and not take care of me? I'm his own. I've been bought with a price. I have not been redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but I've been redeemed, I've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus. I am God's child. He is responsible for me. My daughter and my son-in-law, they're getting ready to do some things, make some financial moves. And she said, I told dad, I told my husband, now, nah. he said, I don't have, <laughs> he said, I don't have a whole lot of money to give you towards this thing. She said, but I kind of got money because I got a daddy. 
Y'all didn't catch that. I don't have money, but I got a daddy. If you can just get that revelation. Oh my God. I don't have money, but I got a daddy. I got a daddy and he's a good, good father. If you would just make that translation in your mind, you will go through life without all this fear. But when I don't have money, I got a daddy and he's a good daddy. Not only is he a good daddy, not only is he rich, he created rich. He's the originator of rich. Why? Because he said, all the gold is mine. All the silver is mine. And Jesus said, so why are you taking thought for what you're going to eat? What you're going to wear? What you're going to put on? What I just read you in Matthew 6 is the foundation for, for how I live and, and how this church exists. Those six and a half years that you hear me talk about us being in Maine struggling, I cut my teeth on this word. And I meditated on it because there were times we didn't have food. There was times we didn't have uh, or look like we were, like, I'm not, I'm not going to say this time, I'm not going to say time we didn't have food. We were in between. We were in between chicken wings. And we're laughing, but I kind of really mean that because we would be down to our last. And Marcia would call me up at work and say, we don't have anything else to eat. And I said, well, God said in his word, take no thought. I'm here to work these claims. You try and bring me worrying about this food. I know it sounds crazy. I said, God going to supply. And did, didn't he do it, honey? Randomly, somebody calling up. This woman, what was that woman's name who worked at the fish market? Lord, we, Pastor Martin didn't even eat fish, but we ate a lot of fish then. <laughs> what was that woman's name, honey? No, that wasn't Miss Davis. Miss Davis helped me out with the rent one time. That, that was another blessing. Okay. Okay. Look, uh, watch this. We watched God give us food. We watched God give us favor. There, there was this woman in our church. She couldn't stand the pastor, but she loved me. Now, now she should have liked the pastor. But she, y'all, y'all mean no harm, y'all. But y'all, y'all got to say, this is one of these Methodist churches where the pastors go in and out. So the people, they don't necessarily develop relationship with the pastor like that. They like the last pastor. They don't like this one. They like the pastor three, uh, three conferences ago. They don't like, she couldn't, she did not, she couldn't stand that pastor, but she loved me. And one day she called me up. She said, you, you, the Lord told me to ask you, do you need anything? I sure do. What you need? I'll rent. Well, how much you need? $700. All right, I'm going to give it to you. I never asked anybody for anything. She called me. I didn't call her. Now, some of y'all would have missed out on God. No, I don't need nothing. <laughs> and all your stuff outside your house <laughs> with a big old tag on the door. I sent somebody to help you, but your pride wouldn't receive it. That woman worked down at the fish market, down at the wharf. She would call us up and give us all kinds of fish. Another time, the pastor in the church we were in, now I was teaching a Bible study. I'm teaching faith. I'm teaching then the same thing I'm teaching y'all here now. The same thing. It just hadn't manifest yet, but I knew it was true. I knew it was just a matter of time. And watch this. And we didn't even have our food. And I was saying, take no thought for your life. What you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, you're going to put on. I was just learning it, but I was learning I could, Marcia can tell you, I literally would learn it, read it, and go teach it. Learn it, read it, go teach it. Learn it, reach it, and, 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 and go teach it. And, and people would call, one, one time, we down to nothing, and the pastor, the pastor called me up and said, listen, I need you to go shopping with me. I said, all right. We, 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 we went to go shopping. Now, mind you, we didn't talk to anybody about our circumstances, because I'm teaching faith. I got to walk this thing out. We go shopping with him, and he said, he said, you know, my wife usually does the shopping. What do you think? You should get this one or that one. I said, well, huh, I like that one. You, you want this or that? You think this one better? I said, well, this one's better. We, yeah. You know, you know this? Well, well, you get this one. And so he said, thanks for going shopping with me. He brought me back to the house. He said, help me take this upstairs. All is yours.
I watch God supply our food. Okay? I told Marcy, we ain't going on Wick. But Wick was on us. Because we had a neighbor next door who was on Wick. And she was shared a Wick with Marcy. Then when I found out what Wick was even meant, I was mad. Women, infants, and children. What about the man? I ain't a woman, an infant, nor a child. I live up in this piece too. I watched God. And I got the revelation, I'm God's child. God del- say, say this, say, God delivered me out of darkness. I'm in the kingdom, so I'm his responsibility. Okay, let me move on here. Every kingdom has its own currency. Every kingdom has its own currency. The currency of the United States of America is the dollar. The currency of the United Kingdom is the British pound. The currency of the European Union is the euro. We were in London several years ago. No, we were in Paris. We took a day trip. Uh, uh, yeah, we took a, a day trip to London. Get on the, the, the train there, uh, the, the fast speed train, whatever called, and went out in like two hours. Okay? And I had, I had euro. And as soon as we get off, I went to go do something. They said, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. With the, say, that, that, that's a euro. I said, yeah, I know. I'm in Europe. <laughs> but the United Kingdom is, is not in the British Common Union. Remember Brexit? They got their own thing going on. So they got the pound. You cannot use the euro, which you can use in most of the other European countries. You can't use that in the United Kingdom. They have their own currency, which is the British pound. So now I had to go exchange the euro for pounds. Uh, the currency of Japan is the yen. The currency of Nigeria is the naira. The currency of South Africa, these ones I know, these places I've been, of South Africa is, a, is the rand. The hit, here's your note point. The currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. It's not a matter of whether you have enough money. It's a matter of whether you have enough faith. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be moved and cast into the sea, and it must obey you. It's not a matter of whether you can afford it. It's a matter of whether God says to do it. It's not a matter of whether you can pay for it. It's, it's a matter of whether God tells you to pursue it. The currency of the kingdom is what? Faith. Say it with me. Say faith, faith is the currency of the kingdom. When you change financial systems, you depend more on your faith than on your money. Let me say it again. When you change financial systems, you depend more on your faith than on your money. Until you change financial system, your oh my God, your life will always be limited based upon your money. And God wants you to live an unlimited life. Look at somebody say, take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limits off. Which is why, as I, as I referred to a couple of times today, I've been saying it for years, I've been saying it for years. If he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it, he do it again. And that sounds so good. It sounds like faith, but it's, a, it's limited faith. Because the Lord t- kept saying to me, behold, I do a new thing. Stop talking about what I did before. I make all things new. No, take the limits off me. It's not just if I did it before, I'll do it again. I'll do something new for you. I'll take you to another level. I'll take where eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Happen into the heart of me. Stop limiting me to your past. God's the God of your future and your future is bright. God said, I got plans for you. Plans for your welfare. Plans for your increase. Plans to bring you to an expected end. 
It's not a matter of how much money you got. It's a matter of whether you believe God. Now, I'm going to show you how, how limited we are to finances. If I said right now, listen, next year, ne- ne- next year, uh, is, I'm, I'm a, I want to go do something. And I, want, I want to take about 50 people with me to, to London. I'm just saying that. There are several of you right now who say, I ain't got no London money. Ain't no way. I, you, 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 you immediately say, I can't go. And that's not how you approach that. Your approach should be, okay, Lord, do you want me to go to London with Bishop? You only catch that. Lord, you, do you want me to go to London with Bishop? Or even say, Lord, I desire to go to London. So, God, I'm asking that you give me the money to go to London. I, I'm telling you how to, how to change how you live. You see, it, it's depending on which system you're on. Some of y'all would say, well, I can see. Let me see how many, how many limit I got on my credit card. And uh, you see, I could probably charge that. That's because you live the credit system more than your faith system. Some of us, we got a lot of faith in the credit system. Personally, I'm not saying this to boast. Personally, at any given time, I got at least, and that, that's what our home equity loan, if I, did, if I did home equity loan, I have the access to more. But at any given time, I got about $250,000 of credit that I have access to. But I, I don't use that. At, I mean, at any given time. Now, if I live that system, I probably would have $1,000 worth of credit. Some of y'all get that later. Because I would have used up all the credit to live a life that I should be living by faith. And some of you, the reason why you can't live God's system, not because you're broke, but you got too much faith in your money. You got too much faith in your credit. You got too much faith in your resources without God that you don't trust God. When we first went to Nigeria, was it Nigeria? I believe it was Nigeria. No, specifically Ghana. Because by the time we got, when we went to Nigeria, where we went to Nigeria, a lot more poverty than what we saw in Ghana. So it wasn't a lot of building going on there. And so I would, we would be riding down this, and I would see, a house, half a half a house here, a half a house there, cinder blocks here. Cinder. And I said, well, I said, what happened? The housing market shut down. You know, I'm thinking, you know, the, the bank then took back the money. They said, oh, no, they're building their house. They'll be finished in two years. And then I went a little further, and I saw a billboard that advertised a bank and a mortgage. And our host said, oh, that's something new they bring in here. Y'all ain't catching this. They said, oh, that, that's something new that they're bringing here. When we first went to Ghana, you get a house and you build your house by faith. That's why it looked like it was taking a while. Can I tell you? Ooh, oh my God. Sometimes when you go the way of faith, it takes a little longer. But by you done, it added no sorrow. The blessed of the Lord, it maketh rich. So our faith is, oh, I'm trying, man, I'm, oh, boy, I hope, hope somebody's getting this. Our faith is in our credit score. And you should have a good credit score. But don't put your faith in it. Okay? Our faith is in our credit score. Our faith is in our banking relationships. Nothing wrong with those having those things. But all that, I want to jump down here and run but I'm conscious of our lighting. <laughs> Dr. Winston didn't care nothing about my light. He said, can I preach down there? He said, you ever preach down there? I said, no, our lighting is not designed to be down there. He sat back. I said, you want to preach down there? He said, yeah, I want to preach down there. So he didn't care nothing about So I, I started sitting on my, t- I said, he going to be on the floor, do the best you can, with, 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 with the lighting. But, but watch this. All that stuff I'm talking about, your credit score, your job, all that 3D stuff. Oh. You're limiting yourself to 3D. 
For those of us who were here Friday night, Dr. Bill Winston started talking to us about 4D. 3D, okay? Let me, let me bring everybody up to snuff. Everybody up to par. Remember years ago, I think one of the first movies came out was um, Avatar. Remember Avatar? Avatar movie came out? That was one of the first movies. And they, you went to glass, and they gave you 3D glasses. Okay, you put those glasses on, right? And now make you feel like you're in, you're not just watching the scene, make you feel like you're in the scene. You're with me here, okay? But uh, this, which I ain't heard nothing else. I ain't heard much about it. I don't know people buying these things. The, the new Meta thing, they, they came out like $3,500. Any of y'all got it? You better be tired. I got it. Okay. I changed this causing some problems here. And uh, so 3D is length, width, and depth. Okay? Length, width, and depth. Okay? If you would just look at me just straight here, the side of me, okay, is my width. Up and down is depth. Okay? I mean, up. Up and down is, a length, is length, width, but looking behind me, that's depth. But all this 3D length, length, width, and depth is all based on what we see. 4D is another dimension. So Dr. Winston started talking about living in 4D, living beyond what you can see. Your credit score is what you can see. Your bank account is what you can see. But there's another dimension of resources that we don't see. Man, that thing jumped my pit. God wants you to live a 4D life. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I think I saw somewhere in the scripture that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, neither into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those of us who love him. And he's not talking about heaven. Because he said, when we get revelation, we get 4D. But God has revealed them things unto us by his spirit. By his spirit, I got 4D living. By his spirit, I can have things I can't pay for. By his spirit, I can go pursue things I don't have the money for because I live a 4D life. I'm not limited to what I see in the natural. But you, if you're going to live that life, you got to change systems. You got to change what you're dependent upon for your needs to be met. What's the currency of the kingdom? Matthew 17, 20. Matthew 17, 20. They said, Lord, why couldn't we do this? What's the problem? Why couldn't? We get the manifestation we wanted. Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Because of what? <laughs> Why aren't you further along in life now? Because your unbelief. Why did you start that and finish and didn't finish it? Because your unbelief. Why did you give up on that? Because your unbelief. For verily I say, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, it shall be removed, and nothing will be impossible to you. 11, Hebrews 11, 6, now faith, uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things for, is the evidence of things what? Is the evidence of things what? Faith is for the not seen. Faith is for the not seen. Faith is for what? The not seen. When you change systems, you can live your life beyond what you see. Amen. So you need faith. Because faith is for the unseen. Watch this. Well, I just don't see how that's going to work. Well, I just don't see how I can do that. Well, I just don't see how I'm ever going to be able to pay for that. Watch this. Well, I just don't see how I'll ever be out of debt. So what you need? See, like you need some faith. Because you don't see. When you don't see, you need faith. Because faith is for what you don't see. Now faith is the substance. It's the substance. It's the stuff of things hoped for. It's the evidence 
that I can have it. It's the evidence that I already have it, what I don't even see. Watch this. Every time you see what you don't see in the unseen, think 4D. Now, I don't know what Dr. Winston going to put in his book. Somebody need to send him some of my tape so he can add this stuff to it. <laughs> Every time you see unseen, you think, I need, I need to go 4D. Every time they say, you don't have enough money, say, oh, no, it's all right, I'm going 4D. <laughs> Doctors say, listen, there's nothing we can do. All right, doctor, I appreciate it. I'm going to go 4D. We're going, we're going 4D. I appreciate you. My, my, my daughter love over here. It was, it was funny. I almost bust out laughing. When my, when my grandson, he... He had an accident and he had to have surgery on his finger. And he, just a tip finger, but then this he was giving a bad report about what was going to be the. And so we're sitting in the emergency room and the doctor, the surgeon's coming. He said, he said now you, What's your name? Uh, uh, one of my ads said, Quickly, come here. Okay. He said, he said, he said, he said Now, what, what, what's your name? He said, Doctor so and so. Uh, and she said, What's the other doctor going to be helping you with the surgery? He said, Dr. So-and-so. He said, I don't care what you believe. We're about to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you anoint the hands of Dr. So-and-so and all will be well. With, he will, you will lead these hands. All will be well with my child. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> thank you. No, she said, I don't care what you believe. She didn't ask, can I pray for you? Are you a believer? I don't care. Right now, I'm going 4D. Some of y'all, you've been limit, you're limiting yourself based on all these 3D people. If I listen to 3D people, we wouldn't have built this church. Herb, don't, baby, don't you see? Don't you see folks ain't coming to church? I don't see the folks who ain't coming to church. I see the folks who are going to be coming to church. <laughs> you see what the statistics say I see the God who defies statistics had a luncheon with the pastors in our fellowship most of them have smaller churches and one of them said to me he said well Bishop isn't it true that most churches are under 50 members most 90 percent I said well that's statistic I don't know but y'all have heard me teach yeah most churches in America are 99 percent of churches have less than 100 people, okay? So this church and others like it and far beyond it are rare exceptions. Even though, watch it, they're, we're the ones you keep hearing about because we got enough money to get the message out. It may be a church right over the corner in a storefront who preaching as good as me, if not better than me, you just don't know it because he ain't on radio and he ain't on television. Are y'all with me? And I, I said, no, but most church, but watch this. I, he said, so, 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 so since the average is, I said, no, 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 no. I said, no, I said, now for me, I said, whenever I hear what the statistics are, I say, that's the floor for me. I'm supposed to be the exception. Y'all been in this church? I've been teaching for years. We supposed to live what? We supposed to live above average. Average is the floor for us. So if the average, because the average is what everybody can see. I'm supposed to live above average. You're supposed to live better. We're, our family's supposed to be above average. Our finances is supposed to be above average. Everything about our lives is supposed to. So when you see the statistics, see that as a floor. That's the bottom for me. Because I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail. I'm supposed to be above and not believe. But you've got to have some 4D faith to even talk like that. All right, now let me get to some points. Let's get into this. So when you come into the kingdom of God, you get born again, you have, you must learn to switch systems. Come on, everybody say with me. Say, today is the day that I switch systems to use my faith and go for a D. 
That fourth dimension is a faith dimension. Beyond what eyes have seen and ears have heard. Beyond length, width, and depth. So the first thing, if you're going to switch systems, you got to switch from, from fear to faith. This world system is a fear system. If you watch the news every day, it's a fear system. Everything designed to make us fearful, make us scared, keep us shaking. Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4. But now, when the kingdom of God, we go from fear, from the fear system to faith system. Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon table, tables, that he may run that what readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, what you got to do? Though it tarry, you got to do what? When God gives you a vision, you got to keep speaking it and speak it and speak it. You got to speak it until it speaks for itself. I can't tell you how many people have come into this new sanctuary who were with us years ago and been gone for years. People, uh, even their kids are coming up to me who were in grammar school. They're adults now. People come up to me and say, I remember you used to always say, we're going to build a new sanctuary. You were always talking about it. I, and then, you know, more people got more, better language for it. I, I remember when you were casting vision about building this, and I ain't saying it. They, you know, they, say, they say, you built this thing. Y'all built it. Well, I said, oh, better yet, it's built. Because I don't have to speak the vision anymore. The vision speaks for itself. You got to speak it until manifestation says, here I am. You got to keep speaking it and speaking it and speaking it. And though it tarry, wait for it. Though it tarry, speak it. But at the end, it'll speak for itself and don't lie. It's going to come. It's going to come. Behold, his soul is, which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by what? His faith. I take you back to that one because the original that the Hebrews comes from and the New Testament, First Corinthians comes from, where it says the just shall live by faith. It originally comes from Habakkuk 2 and, 2 and 4, which says the just shall live by his faith. You determine how big your faith gets. You determine how big your faith gets. I said this in faith school. And that is you can be inspired by my faith, but you can't live by my faith. <laughs> I can be inspired by your muscles, but I can't live no lift nothing with your muscles. Y'all follow me? I can say, man, look, look, man, you buff. Man, you got triceps and biceps and precepts. <laughs> All kinds of seps. Okay? Well, man, let me look at you. Flex for me. Okay. No, that ain't how this works. I can be inspired by your faith, but when I see your muscle, now I can get inspired and say, now I say, now what you do? Well, you say, well, I, you know, I work out an uh, hour every day and I work on reps and uh, how many pounds you lift. Now, now, unless I'm willing to do what you're going to do, I can't have what you have. A lot of people, y'all look at other people's faith, what their faith produced, but unless you're willing to do what you do, they did, you can't have what they have. Your faith is a muscle that you have to develop. And you start by believing God for the needs. Why well, I says, I often go back to that to Maine. If we couldn't believe God for food then, and that our rent would be paid, well, I said, and we never, uh, and, you know, and, and I listen to some other people say, well, we got evicted. We, we always almost got evicted. We didn't have food. No, we almost didn't have food. Y'all ain't catching this. I stayed in faith and it produced. It came through. Which is why I also preach flow to overflow. It started flowing. It showed up when we needed. We weren't in overflow yet, but I stopped. Man, look at God flow. Flow God, flow God, flow God. I walk here and it shows up. I go here and it shows up. And you got to start living that way to go to the next level. The just shall live by his faith. Galatians 3.11, no man... No man is justified by the law, by obeying rules. It is evident, for the just shall live by 
faith, and now we know it's by your faith. And it's in Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Listen to me. Drawing back from faith. Drawing back from 4D to 3D, God can't get pleasure out of that. The Bible says in, in Romans 4 that Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Nothing gives God glory like strong faith. Nothing gives God glory like strong faith. But if you draw back from it, God has no pleasure in you, which means you're not pleasing him. Okay? Because faith pleases God. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. He that comes to God must believe that he is a rewarder and he is a rewarder of them that do they seek him. The ver what I want was the verse just before that. Okay? Hebrews 11 and, and, and 5, which says, uh, no, th no, that was it. That was it. That, no, I'm sorry. That was right. Without faith, yeah. Without faith, it is impossible to what? So what pleases God? So if we withdraw from faith, God, ha God gets no pleasure out of that. You get pleasure, but pleasure means he's pleased. Let me warn number two. Second thing you're going to have to do to change system, you got, you got to go from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. You have to go from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. Know why people get jealous of pe other people? Because they have a scarcity mindset. Know why people get jealous of, of, of envious of other people? Because they have a scarcity mindset. Know why people hate on other people? Because they have a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset says there's only limited supply. And if you are successful, then I can't be successful. So I got to hate on you. <laughs> Years ago, somehow God bring back this story. I ain't told this story a long, 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 long time. But he just brought it back to my remembrance. Years ago, uh, when we first started our church, uh, we needed a vehicle. And back then, my credit was so jacked up, I couldn't buy a vehicle, but you know, we started, I needed a vehicle. The Perry's co-signed for me to get my first vehicle. Somebody, some of y'all like, every time I turn around, he talking about the Perry's. Did you co-sign for my vehicle? <laughs> I talk about you too. They co-signed for me to have a vehicle. We got, what, was it, what year was that? Period, 1998, 99, somewhere around 2000. We got this burgundy, we got this burgundy um, suburban. A brother who was in our church came over to my house. He said, call, call me a pastor, can I talk to you? He yeah. said, come on, comes over to my house. Now, we got all of 25 people. He said, um, 25, 40, something like that. He said, um, I see you got a new vehicle. Yeah, well, everybody can see that. I, I ain't hiding it. He said, well, down to the church, some of us got a problem with your new vehicle. I'm like, well, which some of us is it? It's not the Perry's. Now, nobody else knew that, what they did, but hey, some of us got a problem with your new vehicle. I said, well, you got a problem? He said, because you got the vehicle that I want. I guess I was supposed to say, well, let me take it back then. <laughs> now, I'll never forget this. He said, you got the vehicle that I want. I said, well, let me tell you something. It wasn't custom. It literally came off the lot. They got a bunch of other ones just like this one. Go get you one. And I remember he said, some of us are struggling to tithe. I'll never forget it. And you got a new vehicle. And I said, well, if you say you're struggling to tithe, what you're really telling me is what? I ain't tithing. So if you ain't tithing, I surely ain't dependent on your money for this vehicle. Shortly after that, he left the church and walked with me no more. Oh, if he could see me now. 
Oh my, he'd be one cussing somebody. There's no scarcity in the kingdom. Once you see somebody else with something, you can say, my, look what my God can do. Look what my God can do. Yeah. We go to the same church. We listen to the same word. I'm next in line. I rejoice with you. I rejoice with them that rejoice. God is no respected person. There is no scarcity. But as long as you think scarcity, limited supply, if one is blessed, okay, you do like, like Dr. Wilson said, you try to stay in that crab, I mean, in, in that crab barrel and try to pull everybody, you need to just get up out yourself. You got to change from a scarcity mentality to an abundance mentality. Listen to this. Scarcity mentality has fear of running out. Abundance mentality has faith in running over. Say, this, say, I have no fear in running out. I have faith in running over. God's a God of more than enough. He's El Shaddai. Are y'all listening to me? He's El Shaddai. Deuteronomy 2 and 7. God told the children of Israel, he reminded them while they were in the wilderness. He said, the Lord has blessed you in all the work of your hand. He knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you're going through. He said, for these 40 years, God has been with you and you have what? You have lacked nothing. Come on, say it with me. I will lack nothing. My God, I don't care what's going on in the economy. Come on now, I'm, I'm, this is 4D talk. This is faith talk. This is talk when, when, when you've transcended the natural kingdom and you recognize I'm in the kingdom of God. When you have changed financial system, you will look at the economy and say, I don't care what the interest rates are. If God want me to have a house, I'm gonna have a house. I don't care what the interest rates are. If God wanna give me a car, God gonna give me a car. I don't care if they lay me off, I'm not gonna lose anything. You gotta be like my aunt daddy. I told y'all what my aunt daddy said when they said they want to fire her when she was a when she was assistant teacher because a, a kid in the high school she, she in her 60s. This is her second job. A kid in the high school told her he was bad, he was gonna beat her so and so, and he said the wrong one. She said, "Well, here it is. Meet me after school." She in her 60s telling a teenager, meet me after school. It started going around. Uh, it's going to be a fight. Miss Anderson, she going to fight so-and-so. It started going around. The principal called her to the office and said, Miss Anderson, you can't fight no kid. She said, no, I ain't going to fight him. I'm going to beat his brain. It ain't going to, no, you got no my daddy. It ain't going to be no fight. This going to be a good old blank whipping. They said, Miss Anderson, if you fight a student, we're going to fire you. She said, let me tell you something. When I came here, I was looking for a job. And when I leave here, I'll be looking for a job. She wasn't a kingdom person. She didn't know no scriptures. But some kind of way she knew, just like I got this job, I'll get another job. When you, when you transcend this system, you say, if God don't take care of me through that, he'll take care of me through this. Oh, let, let me go deeper. Try to threaten me about how much tithe you give and you won't leave this church. Oh, let me tell you something. My God getting ready to send in somebody who gave far more than you could ever give. I refuse to be in bondage to any one person and my God shall supply. And my God shall, and my God. Come on, somebody shout, no lack. You got to believe God's a God of abundance. He's a God of abundance. Luke 22, 35, Jesus sends his disciples out. He said, when I sent you out, I told you don't take your money bag. Don't take your knapsack. Don't take your sandals. That's Luke 22, 35, the King James. He said, when I sent you out and I forced you to live by faith, he said, did you lack anything? And they said nothing. When you obey God, I'm not talking about getting ahead of God. I'm not talking about being fear lacking behind God. But when you are walking with God, so that's why I'm telling you, don't buy a vehicle till you pray about it. I don't care how much credit you got. I don't care if you got an 860 credit score. It goes to about 850 now. Okay? But some of y'all are seeding abundant. Okay? But I don't care how much. You said, now God, am I supposed to buy this car? 
because something else could come up where God wants you to pay for that. But if, if God tells you to buy it, then where he leads, he feeds. Where he guides, he provides. Where he directs, he protects. But you don't do things just based upon 3D. When you're a person of faith, you go into the realm of spirit and ask God what he says about it. The third one, I'm going over my time today, but I want to finish this part. The third one today, if you're going to, trans, if you're going to transfer systems and change it to God's financial system, you got to have, you got to go from grind to grace. Look, somebody say, I'm going from grind to grace. When Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis 3, 17 through 19, God said, now because of that, you're going to have to grind. All right? He said, now, uh, because you disobeyed me, Genesis 3, 17, he said, curses the ground because of you, and in sorrow you're going to eat. He said, there's going to be thorns and thistles. It's going to be hard. That means it's hard to make a living. Okay? He's, verse 19, in the sweat of your brow, that's how you're going to eat until you die. Go back to the ground. For out of it you were taken from dust uh, thou art uh, uh, unto, th for dust thou art, dust thou return. And so, but watch this, but when you come into the kingdom, which is what Deuteronomy, as God was bringing to the promised land, he, showed, he was showing them what, what things will be like in the kingdom of God. But Je Deuteronomy 11, 10 through 12, he says, when I bring you into my kingdom, into the land I want to give you, Verse 12, it says, it's going to be a land which the Lord careth for. The eyes of the Lord, God, are always upon it from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. He said, you're not going to have to take care of yourself. God going to take care of you. So now I'm not trying to make a living. I live in the grace of God. Proverbs 10, the bless of the Lord, what does it do? It makes one rich. You sweating to get rich. You, you grinding to get rich. You, you, you cheating and stealing and, and, tr and trying all type of speculative things. You know, uh, I mean, y'all realize, like, they say Bitcoin, if you own Bitcoin a couple years ago, it is worth nothing now. It's the blessed of the Lord to make rich and add of no sorrow with it. The Amplified of that verse says, the blessed of the Lord, it makes truly rich and he adds no sorrow with it, neither does toiling increase it. So you're trying to work, 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 two jobs, three jobs, I can't come to church, uh, I can't come to conference because I got to work, 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 and, and, and I'm working overtime. And God said, my goodness, I'm feel sorry for you. That's not the life you're supposed to be living. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. Look at this scripture. Now I got one more point. I'm done because I'm over. Paul says, by, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, by the grace of God. He said, his grace towards me was not in vain. Don't let God's grace on your life be in vain. He said, I labored more abundantly than all. He said, I labored. I worked for what I have. I work for the ministry that God's produced through me, but yet he had to catch himself. Yet not I. It, I really wasn't working. It was the grace of God which was with me. Y'all see that? He said, at first, I, I, I've been, no, no, no. I ain't really had to, Paul said, let me tell you the truth, I ain't had to work that hard. It sounds good to talk about all I've done. It well, ain't been that hard. It was the grace of God was with me. And when the grace of God is with you, what's hard for folks, other folks, is easy for you. Are y'all listening to me? Do y'all realize, I mean, even in the natural, there are, I mean, there are people who sweat and perspire and it seems like people who just sit. I mean, you, 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 do y'all see Miranda Curtis? I, I don't mean her. I mean, uh, y'all know I love Sean. That's my, that's my man. That's my boy. That's my son. I love him. But he be a bit working. Don't try this at home. You need to eat your Wheaties. Especially when he, he hit that note and go, ah! I didn't even do it. He be working. And then he know how to pace himself. He'll tell y'all, he said, come on, everybody dance. Y'all ever know what he do? He go. I'm like, no, you dance, leader. Show us how to dance. He be Sean be working. Miranda, she hit these notes, she's like. I said, you better get your patty on. And it just comes out.
When God anoints you to do things, when you do it with the grace, it's no grind in it. Pastor Marcia said, she kept stressing it when she was preaching Friday at faith school, our work is to believe. Our work is to believe. Our work, that's the believer's job, is to believe. Our job is to believe that he does, has done, and will do all the heavy lifting. My job is to believe. One final point to switch financial systems. You got to go from the visible to the invisible. I wrote down fourth dimension visibility. Say that, say I'm operating with fourth dimension visibility. Of visibility. Romans 1 and 20. Now watch this. The Bible keeps telling us that we didn't have language for it. Now we got language for it. Bill Winston gave it to us. 4D language. Romans 1 and 20. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen. Huh? You don't see that scripture? For the invisible things are clearly seen. See, that's why people who, people who only got 3D, the Bible be, it be contradicting itself. Because it said the visible things of him from creation of the world are what? Clearly seen. Well, if it's invisible, how's it clearly seen? If it's invisible, how is it clearly seen? Because I see it in 4D. You got to put your 4D glasses on. I know we thought 3D was good. We got to get some 4D glasses. When you look at stuff through the word, when you look at stuff through the eyes of faith, you get some 4D glasses. The invisible things of him are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Uh, even unto his external power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God says, through faith, you can see invisible things. So, if you're going to transfer your allegiance from these systems, from system of the world to the system of faith, from world system, mammon system to faith system, I got to see with God's eyes of faith. Then the invisible things are clearly seen. And you're with that. Look at Hebrews 11 and 3. Through faith we understand. Through what? Through faith we understand. Yeah, I know you're going to school for it, but through faith we understand. You try to look all these concordant, get all, get all the definitions, but some things you're not going to understand naturally. It's through faith we understand. That's why some of the smartest people are the dumbest people. You didn't catch that. That's why some of the smartest people are the dumbest people. Because they're trying to see everything through a test tube. Through a microscope. Through research. Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that things which are made, which are seen, were not made of things that appear. He said there's some invisible stuff that creates the visible stuff. If I'm going to, if I'm going to change systems, I got to start believing in the invisible more than I believe in the visible. Two more and I'm done here. Colossians 1.16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven. God created what? All things. That are where? In heaven and where? Come on, they got it on the screen. That in heaven and earth. And, and, the, and the things come in two kind of categories. What's two categories? Visible. So God created, so there are things that are invisible. God created things that you don't see. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But through my faith, I go beyond what I see and I believe what I don't see. Oh my God. Visible and invisible, whether they're thrones or dominion, principalities, power, all things were created by him. God has created some invisible things for you, but you can't get it until you change systems. Mm. Hebrews eleven twenty seven. Come on. Hebrews eleven twenty seven. By faith, Abraham, uh, um, Moses, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He endured. He endured. He went through as seeing him who was invisible. 
He saw him who was invisible. I know you don't, come on, I, you, don't you walk up on me. I know you think I'm by myself. Oh, but yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. His rod and his staff is protecting me. I'm never alone. Don't ever think I'm outnumbered. Surely goodness and mercy follows me. All the, well, where is it? I know you don't see it, but I know it's right there. Goodness and mercy follows me. All the, and so I go through life without fear because I see him who is invisible. Oh my God. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18, we got a light affliction. Whatever you're going through, it's a light affliction. But it's going to work for you, a more saving weight of glory. But in order for it to work for you, you can't look at what's working against you. In order for it to work for you, you can't look at what's working against you. Because the things which are seen are what? Are temporal. It's temporary. It's going to pass. But the things which are not seen are eternal. God wants me to live in a realm of internal things that I don't see. So my God, I'm not limited by this system. There's a whole nother system that supports me, that backs me, that helps me, that fights for me, that provides for me, that you don't see. And sometimes I don't even see it as long as I'm looking 3D. But when I go 4D, I know I am helped. And then the last one, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, I know I said four, I was wrong, I had one more. But as it's written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Oh, let, 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 let me make it plain. It's written, 3D eyes haven't seen. 3D ears haven't heard. Neither it entered to the heart of 3D men. The things which God has prepared, he hath prepared. Watch this. See, that's why it's not a funeral scripture. Because he's not going to prepare it. It's already prepared. The things that God has prepared for who? Them that what? Anybody here love my Jesus. If you love him, God has some things that are already prepared for you. But keep on reading. The things I haven't seen. Here's I've heard. Go on to the next verse. The things that have not entered to the heart of man. Keep going. Come on, y'all. God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. God reveals things we don't see by his spirit. For those who don't come to Bible study, that's why we got to become more spiritual. The more spiritual you are, the more you can live a supernatural life. Dr. E. Dewey Smith, we sat down on, well, he was here Thursday night. Thursday night for fellowship, and he kept going on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and, on. and along with, along with uh, Bishop Haskell telling me, listen, Bailey, you need to understand what you've done, folks haven't done. What you've done to do this in the midst of a pandemic, at the end of a pandemic, you need to say, nobody's done it. He started telling me about, he started naming all these church, great churches all around the country. I know, you know, they lost their building. They were never able to finish that project. Look what you do. You got to write this down. You got to put this in a book. You got, you got to do seminars on it. I'm telling you, I'm tell, he said, I know you ain't listening to me, but everybody listen, listen. Everybody needs to understand it. Everybody hasn't done this. You got to put this in a book. You got to put this in a book. You got to write this. You got to explain this. And, and, and everybody, he said, see, you're looking, you're looking at me like, like you just do this all the time, but you don't understand. Folks don't know how to do this. Even what you just said right there. Folks, most folks don't know that. You got to let other people know this. And know what I'm sitting there saying? I said, yeah. I said, but, but, but I don't know how I did it. I said, can't tell nobody because I don't know how I did it. All I know was led by the Spirit of God. I didn't have a plan. I just saw the invisible and I kept walking to it. I'm not that smart. But I got that much faith. Didn't have a great church backing me, but I had a great God backing me. Didn't have denominational support, but I know goodness and mercy was following me. I don't know how I did it. That's what I'm sitting there scratching my head. I said, God, I want to tell people. I would love to do seminars. But I know a whole lot of what I'm going to tell them is 4D. A lot of what I'm going to tell them is 4D. And folks ain't willing to go 4D. Every time I tell one of these pastors, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling them, you need to go 4D. Every time I say, I don't know what to do. I'm telling them, you, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. You got to go 4D. 
There's some stuff beyond where you are. And I'm talking to people here today who think your life is limited because you didn't finish school. I'm talking to some people today, and some of you, the truth of the matter is, I'm not going to say it's, it's too late, but your, things altered in your life. You had children that had to become a priority. By the way, for all of you, once you had children, children got to become your priority. Not your partying, not you living your best life, not you on Facebook and Instagram trying to look sexy and you somebody's mama. Children got to become your priority once you have them. So your life had to be altered. You had to make your children priority. Some of you were doing things, and I know it happens all the time. I'm in a situation right now, I just have help. Bishop Bailey had no natural children. I'm the close he has to a natural child. But there's a young lady who we grew up in the church with who's actually planning on leaving New Jersey, but she's there to take care of him. Things shifted real quick. Mother Bailey is always, Mother Bailey is about 10 years older than Bishop Bailey. And she always said, she always said, who's going to take care of him? And she would call me when things were happening. She said, you need to call him, you need to call him, you need to talk to him, talk to him. Things can happen with your elderly parents quick. And you got to shift. Some of you in situations, you have no choice but to go 4D. You can't figure this out. You don't have money. You don't have resources. And watch this. And I've been in situations, y'all, because money is not my problem at this point in my life. But there's something money can't solve. Be not deceived. There's some stuff you can't pay folks to do. People are like, keep your money. No, I ain't trying to do that. We got to trust God. And if we would trust God and change systems, ultimately what I'm saying, change system is what you depend on to be successful. What you depend on to supply your needs. Some people is education. You all know I'm an advocate for education for education. Some people, it's just finances. I'm an advocate for managing your finances. But I don't care what we have in the natural. That's why the, uh, well, no matter what we have in the natural, there's another level of spiritual living with spiritual manifestations that God wants to give us. That's why it says the Lord will increase you more and more. Well, I says both small and great. Because some of you, naturally speaking, a great, even it looks like without God. At least you think so. You understand? I mean, well, what I mean is like you didn't like pray, you didn't fast, you didn't sow, you just got some natural things going on for you. And it seemed like you're great, but you're not as great as you can be. That's why he will increase you more and more. And God, every one of us, everyone standing, God wants you to live a supernatural life. But you got to change systems. Some of you live in a life of stress and worry and fear. You just haven't changed systems that I really believe God to supply my needs. Now, I'm not talking about presumption, just running out and doing anything you big and bad enough to do and say, God, I'm going over here. Come on over here. God, I'm doing this. Bless this. No, I'm talking about being led by the Spirit of God and living a life of faith that you really recognize God takes care of me. How you make your living? I believe God. That's why you don't tremble. You don't tremble when jobs leave. And you all know everything I preach to y'all is because I lived it. I was leaving my house one day in March 1997, driving my company car, planning on going down to the office down there at Knox Abbott in, in what, State Street or 12th Street there in Casey. My company car, my corporate American Express. My 
my, my 50 pound laptop computer. <laughs> my bag phone. Y'all don't know the bag. And on the way they said, Herb, don't go to the office. Come down to the NBC Suites. We got a meeting going on down there. Went to the NBC Suites, walked into the office. I said, oh man, this, wow, what's going to happen here? There must be a major promotion. You got the president of human resources with us. Got the president of the whole claim department. You got my boss's boss here. And they fired me. Took away my $65,000 a year. Took away my corporate American Express. Took away my expense account. Took away everything that, to some degree, I had pride in. Look what I've done. Boy from the projects of Jersey City, New Jersey, living a corporate life. And God said, I'm going to take you on adventures of faith. I don't care how great your life was. I'm going to show you what I'll do if you trust me. And he forced me to live by faith. Because when I could go get another job, he said, don't, don't do anything else. People came to me with all kind of opportunities. He said, do nothing else but ministry. Now, let, let me tell you all this. I'm, I haven't said, I've never said this publicly, but I'm going to say it publicly. There's a lot of people in ministry who try to make light of or try to throw off about preachers who become successful just doing ministry. And they always want to tell you about everything else that I do because they, in some kind of way they imply there's something wrong with being successful just preaching the gospel. Well, I'm one of them. And I make no apologies about it because I know what God told me. I know what he told me. He told me to depend on him. He, he told me I never in 27 years ever taken an offering for myself. As somebody come here, I told him one time, don't take an offering, I already got it. And they disobeyed me and took an offering for themselves. I rebuked them and God had to restore us. But it took about 20 years because I said, you will never preach in this church again because I don't believe in preachers taking offering for themselves. I watch God take care of me. And I'm, I'm saying that to tell you that God will take care of you. Stop stressing. Invest yourself in the kingdom. There's some of you this church will be at a whole nother level. If you would just serve, if you would take your gifts, your talent, your ability, and say, hey, how can I help here? Don't come tell me how great you are in graphics. And you see all the graphics we need around here. Can I ever do a graphic for you? But you out there grinding to make graphics for somebody. I don't have time because y'all think this is this nice little volunteer work. This is the business of the kingdom. There's no business on earth as important as the business of the kingdom of God. This business keeps marriages together. This business keeps kids off drugs. This business causes generational blessings. This business helps you be successful in the other businesses. Oh God, I, I'm done. I, I got so much in me here. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Let me pray for you. I start laying hands and doing all that. We're going to be here all day. Father, I pray for your people. I pray God that this message today has gotten in our hearts and our spirits that we trust you that we really invest ourselves, throw ourselves into your business at whatever level you want us to do it. For some of us, that just means having a daily prayer life. For some of us, that means really living for you and not making excuses for why we still live like the world though we come to church. For some of us, it means making a commitment beyond a casual commitment to you. Father, I pray that there are people here who will make bold moves today to say I'm changing systems. I'm going to trust God with my life. 
I'm going to believe that God can take care of me better than I can take care of myself. Not just financially, but in my mind, in my soul. Some of you are so stressed. God said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You'll find rest for your souls. For your soul. Your, your soul is tormented. Your soul is worried. Your soul is stressed. But come unto me, I'll give you You'll find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. God said, just change systems. Get out of the fear system. Come to the faith system. 